This review was made possible by contributions from viewers like you. It's the most wonderful time of the year. With the studios cash grabbing and copyright flagging for reasons unclear. It's the most wonderful time of the year. They're the dumb, dumbest movies they sell. All the holiday tripe that makes me wanna gripe seriously, what the hell? They're the dumb, dumbest movies they sell. Oh, why me? There'll be movies for riffing, comics for nitpicking, of course it must be a Bob show. There'll be bad animation, ducks talking, damnation, and plots that you cannot follow. What the hell's going on? It's the most wonderful time of the year. I might be misbehaving, but I've got my raven under mistletoe. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Ding dong, the witch is dead. Witch, oh witch, the wicked witch. Ding dong, the wicked witch is dead. Hey guys. A few years ago, I reviewed Christmas Comes to Packland, because apparently any franchise can have a Christmas special, regardless of how little sense it makes. It's a federal law. If something exists, there must be a Christmas special. Look it up. Yeah, pretty much. If things like Pac-Man, My Little Pony, and even frickin' He-Man have their own Christmas specials, why not The Wizard of Oz? Today's little offering, Dorothy's Christmas in Oz, is based on the cartoon show Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz, which was made by Warner Brothers Animation exclusively for the Boomerang Network. You know, that channel that was originally nothing but reruns of old Hanna-Barbera and Funimation cartoons? They're making new content these days. Weird. Yes, unlike my review for an all-dogs Christmas carol, I'm going into this fully aware of how it's based on a TV show. I just don't care. Yeah, you'll have to forgive me for not knowing the details regarding the show's backstory, but I would wager that the show itself doesn't know them either. We have a world that's clearly based on the MGM film, so much so that they even have Over the Rainbow as the theme song. So then, why does it include elements like Princess Ozma and a Dorothy who looks like Isabella with a Z instead of Judy Garland? I have no idea. Our story begins in the Emerald City, which is beneath a giant glass dome. And Dorothy, who can come and go as she pleases thanks to the ruby slippers, is all excited about how it's the Christmas season. Naturally, her friends don't know what she's talking about. Christmas, huh? You don't say! Well, I'll be. I'm a scared. I'm a scared. Wait, what's this a Christmas? <laughs> you guys! Wait, you really don't know? Well, seeing as how the land is ruled by wizards and witches from all quarters of the map, it doesn't look like Christianity has that strong of a footing in Oz. Dorothy is taken aback by how they don't celebrate Christmas, when who to our wandering eyes should appear but the wizard? Oh, it appears I've stumbled upon a conundrum. I'll say. What are you doing here? Didn't you fly back to Kansas in your balloon, but you couldn't come back because you don't know how it works? Goodbye, folks! Dorothy briefly glosses over the whole spirit of giving thing as she attempts to explain Christmas to her friends, and then she and the wizard start reminiscing about the more superficial of Christmas traditions, as if that's what the holiday is all about. Smooth. Like the Christmas snow. Singing carols. Stuffing stockings. Trimming the tree and putting presents under it. Boughs of holly. Or candy canes. Eggnog with just a hint of nutmeg. Just look at these guys. They have no idea what Dorothy's talking about. If you have a character in a Christmas special that needs the holiday explained to them, isn't this usually the point where they fall head over heels in love with the idea and are chomping at the bit to do it themselves? And if the wizard is still here, that should mean that he's still in charge, right? Is there any reason why this old Kansas man couldn't introduce Christmas to Oz himself so that he can celebrate with Dorothy now? Nothing's quite like Christmas. 
Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I think so, Scarecrow. But how could you have one partridge in a pair of trees? By the way, Scarecrow here is voiced by Bill Foggerbocky. He doesn't sound as much like Ray Bulger Scarecrow as Jess Harnell sounds like Bert Lars Cowardly Lion, but you know who he does sound like? Jackie Vernon's Frosty the Snowman. We'll throw the very first Christmas in Oz! So, for all of my bitching about this show, at least he does a better Frosty here than in The Legend of Frosty the Snowman. Happy birthday! Anyway, Scarecrow decides that the only thing they can do is recreate their own Christmas, when all they have to go on is Dorothy and the Wizards rambling about... songs and dinner and... stuff? Cowardly Lion volunteers to handle the food, so he goes to look for some stockings that can be stuffed with stuffing. Give me five, and I'll make it ten of your biggest stockings. And they gotta be able to hold enough stuffing for a holiday feast! Mmm, <laughs> stuffing! I think someone got his lions crossed. Oh god, that was terrible. Nope, bigger! Even bigger! Even bigger! Listen, Tay Tay, what part of bigger aren't you getting here? Sheesh! Wow, um, okay. Why does this guy have stockings this unbelievably huge? Does the Emerald City have a bunch of giants walking around? We find Scarecrow trying to get Princess Ozma, whose presence raises so many questions, to make a snowstorm for their Christmas. Hang on. Dorothy is excited because it's December, but there's no snow to be found in Oz. Scarecrow does know what snow is, since he's able to identify it as such when Glinda saves Dorothy from the poppy field in the movie. So Oz does have its share of snowfall, just not in December, which would suggest that Oz is somewhere in the Southern Hemisphere where it wouldn't snow in December. Is... Is Oz literally Australia? I mean, Dorothy did get to Oz again in the third book, Ozma of Oz, while she and her Uncle Henry were traveling to Australia. Uh, anyway, Ozma agrees to make it snow. Hey, I remember snow, the cold flakes that fall from the sky! This wise ruler of Oz certainly has a tenuous grasp on the world around her, doesn't she? Maybe that's why it was so easy for the wizard to take over Oz like he did. And why did they make her sound like Glinda? And why does she have Glinda's power to make it snow? Why didn't they just give this bit to Glinda when they very clearly had Glinda in mind? It's not like she doesn't exist in this continuity. She's right there in the opening title sequence! Wasn't Ozma just a princess? Why did they give her magic powers? Well, she did have magic powers when she got the ruby slippers at the end of Return to Oz. But if we're going on that continuity, then why don't we see TikTok or Jack Pumpkinhead? I don't know, moving on! While that's happening, the Tin Man takes care of the Christmas carols with these little ladies. So we have the Lollipop Guild and... what, the Peppermint Posse? Observing these goings-on are two winged monkeys named Lyman and Frank. If this were a smarter show, this little nod to L. Frank Baum might be kinda clever. <laughs> shh, shh, what? What is it? What are we searching for, Frank? Because the flying monkeys aren't supposed to talk, you idiot! They overhear Dorothy's friends talking about how all they have left to do is to get Santa Claus to attend their Christmas, whom they deduce must be magical if he's able to deliver presents all over the world in one night. Not sure where they got that bit of information, since neither Dorothy or the wizard mentioned it, but whatever. Armed with this new development, the monkeys fly back to the castle of the Wicked Witch of the West, who is alive somehow? I'm sorry, but how exactly do you walk away from this? Ah! You cursed rat! Or did she come back because she's made of Christmas snow like Frosty? The monkeys tell the witch that Dorothy's planning on bringing Christmas to Oz. Auntie, what's a Christmas? Auntie? Is she the daughter of the Witch of the East? Oh my god, she wants to avenge her mother's death, and she's out for Dorothy's blood just as much as the Wicked Witch of the West! You don't really expect the show to take it in that direction, do you? 
The guy can dream. And why does the little witch look like a brass doll? Yeah, she does look rather cute, doesn't she? What was it that was said about witches in the movie? Only bad witches are ugly. The Witch of the West is intrigued by this Santa person the monkeys are talking about. Maybe you can help me get my powers back. Get your powers back? Doesn't the fact that you've cheated death mean that you've never lost your powers? She could have said, I'll kidnap the Santa Claus to increase my magical powers! Since that is a thing, what with her trying to get the ruby slippers from Dorothy and all. But... She lost her powers? That's just dumb. We jump back to the Emerald City to find that Dorothy's friends have assembled their Christmas with about the same understanding of it as Jack Skellington, though nowhere near as entertaining, and Dorothy loves it. It's snowing! <laughs> Over there is the Christmas tree. <laughs> well, Merry Christmas, Mr. Tree. <laughs> There's nothing merry about it. These lights are hot and the ornaments itch. Well, I think it's perfect. Oh boy, what to comment on first? The fact that this Christmas tree is Jewish, him juggling his invisible breasts to demonstrate how itchy he is, Dorothy's complete disregard for his feelings on the matter, or the fact that they tore him out of the forest by the roots and that he's gonna die soon. And last but not least, it's a jolly fat man in a red suit. Hee hee hee, Murphy Christmas. Sorry we couldn't get the real Santa. Ah, uh, that's all right. Tonight is his busiest night of the whole year. Hmm, the real Santa, eh? You want to see a little Christmas magic? How about this? So the wizard does have magical powers? How can there be so many Wizard of Oz movies that have appeared on my show that were made by people who have not even seen The Wizard of Oz? And not only does the wizard know magic, but he knows the kind of magic that can generate a wormhole directly in front of the impossibly elusive Santa Claus, which then transports him to Oz. Yeah, never mind how Dorothy's thrilled by everything else her friends did, or how she just acknowledged that this is Santa's busiest night of the year. Go ahead and kidnap Santa Claus, that's fine. And wait a minute, if the wizard could always just magically generate wormholes to take people to and from Oz, then why didn't he just send Dorothy back to Kansas when she met him the first time? So yeah, Santa's in Oz, and... What's with the long, effeminate eyelashes? Why does he look like he got smacked in the face with a 2x4? Is he played by Bubba J? <laughs> then the witches show up and... Uh... Steal Santa's sleigh. I would have thought that they'd kidnap him with the flying monkeys like they did with Dorothy in the movie, but I guess this state-of-the-art computer animation couldn't do what a movie made in 1939 could do. Why you can't do that? Yeah, you'll ruin Christmas. And the feast! Don't forget the feast! She's the Wicked Witch of the West, you idiots! What makes you think you can shame her into bringing him back? Dorothy wishes her and her friends to the witch's castle, and as fast as Santa's sleigh is, the magic of the slippers gets them there significantly faster, which means that they have plenty of time to set up a trap where all they have to do is splash some water onto the Wicked Witch again. But of course they can't do that, because that might actually be kinda smart. No, they somehow get to the castle after the witches, and Santa magically unties himself. Of course, he can't just make himself disappear, because that'd be kind of smart, too. Look, whatever it is you want, just get on with it. I don't have time for your shenanigans. I have to touch up my eyeliner. The witch demands that Santa give her some magic, but he explains that he only gives gifts to good people. But I've been good. Once or twice. Ew, don't make the witch's theme cute. Santa denies her again, then Wilhelmina does the unthinkable. She locks him in a cage! Oh no! Santa's one weakness! Tiny spaces! What? Dorothy, what are you doing here? We're here to save you, and Christmas! Ruby slippers, to the sleigh! Ha! Those magical slippers can't do anything to get Santa out of that cage! Why would he need them to? He can fit through the bars! I can't believe I'm referencing Santa Claus Conquers the Martians as a better representation of Santa Claus. The Martians capture Santa and stick him into the airlock, but before they can toss him out into space, he escapes through the air duct using his chimney climbing skills. Santa Claus is a master of breaking and entering. No house can keep him out, and no cage can keep him in. Luckily for Santa dumbass, 
The wizard makes the caves disappear, so now Dorothy can poof them all away. Coaches! Don't just stand there! After them! Step on it! We can't let those goody two shoes save Christmas! Why do you care about the fate of Christmas? All that you wanted was for Santa to give you a little bit of magic. Christmas means nothing to you! They give chase, but Santa slows them down with a little snowstorm. This isn't over, pigtails! I'll get you! And your jolly fat man, too! Any other movie or TV show that did that would call this an homage, but here... It looks like it's just ripping itself off. And if the Wicked Witch of the West was caught in a snowstorm, wouldn't she be melting? Santa is grateful for Dorothy and her friends saving his life, so he decides to bring Christmas to the good people of Oz. Dorothy, will you do the honors? Would you do the honor of giving these presents that are supposed to be delivered to other kids? <laughs> then they... Drop the presents into the pipes from Super Mario Brothers? Oh, and look! He gave a lump of coal to the Gnome King, even though he has no idea who the Gnome King is or the naughty deeds he's committed. How very jolly. Oh, we did it! Every gift in Oz has been delivered! Well done, team! Ooh, look at the time! I better skedaddle! I must be off! Time to get captured by some other Christmas villain! Ho 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 ho! So the wizard opens up another wormhole so Santa can continue on his Christmas Eve flight, but not before he delivers one last present to the Wicked Witch. No, 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 no! Hey, look! It's a new crystal ball! Yeah, just like the one her wickedness was trapped in! How about that? Ho 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 ho! I couldn't resist having a little fun with that Wicked Witch! Merry Christmas, everyone! So not only does Santa give the witch a gift that's very specific to her backstory that he shouldn't know anything about, but he gives it to her for the sole purpose of triggering her post-traumatic stress disorder when all he needed to do was give her a lump of coal like he did for the Gnome King? Santa's an asshole! So that was Dorothy's Christmas in Oz, and oh my god, this was stupid! It's one thing for Dorothy to introduce Christmas to her friends in Oz, or maybe they could show her a very Christmas-like holiday that they celebrate, but this was just a mess. The animation is off-putting when we know that Warner Brothers animation is capable of doing so much better. The continuity is a confusing hodgepodge of paying tribute to the MGM film in the original books and not paying tribute to the MGM film in the original books, and bringing Santa to Oz just doesn't make sense. The wizard shouldn't have the power to bring him here, the witch shouldn't need or want his power to replace what she shouldn't have lost. And frankly, considering how Dorothy directly pointed out that Christmas is supposed to be a time for giving, she should have just used her ruby slippers to wish Santa back to making his rounds as soon as he arrived. Sure, let her be excited upon meeting him, but because this is the season for giving and all, you'd think she wouldn't want to impede on Santa delivering Christmas to all the children of the world, right? If I'm going to see a movie that has both Santa and The Wizard of Oz, I think I'll just stick with a Christmas story. I like the wizard of Oz. Well said, you little freak. See you later. Once there was a wicked witch in the lovely land of Oz. And a wickeder, wickeder, wickeder witch there never, never was. She filled the folks in Munchkin Land with terror and with dread. Till one fine day from Kansas Way, a cyclone caught a house that brought the wicked, wicked witch her doom as she was flying on her broom. For the house fell on her head, and the coroner pronounced her dead. news was spread Ding dong, the witch is dead Witch, oh witch, the wicked witch Ding dong, the wicked witch is dead Wake up, you sleepy head Rub your eyes, get out of bed Wake up, the wicked witch is dead 
she's gone where the goblins go below 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 yo ho let's open up and sing and ring the bells out ding dong the merry o sing it high sing it low let them know the wicked witch is dead Today I have a nice big box to open here from Something the So-and-So of Kettering, Ohio. <laughs> I've never been given a package by a something before. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> yes, I really do need it to get myself a decent opener, don't I? Come on. There we go. Box is falling apart. Got a letter to read here first. Along with a sealed envelope, which does not have the letter. Hmm. Hello, Bob Show. I'm the one who sent you the subbed uh, Jungle Dread Hugo movies and the first two Brave Little Toaster movie files, both of which I can't wait to hear your thoughts on. I've been a fan since the Cool Cat Saves the Kids and Alpha and Omega Family Vacation Reviews were first uploaded. It's nice and, and to finally send you some uh, review material after having watched your wonderful show for so long. Thank you. Inside this package, I've included DVDs and a little help for the reviews of the Pup Star sequels, as well as some drawings. I hope you enjoy all of them, regardless of reason. Your videos introduced me to Sabrina Online, and I also watched Go Hugo Go after I saw the first review trailer. I couldn't stand Bronson Pinkshawn's incessant squealing, and eventually I found the Danish versions. Since I've discovered those, I've become a fan of the series, and I was excited to see that you downloaded the files for the originals. Since Media Hunter has reviewed the first and third Hugo films, and you reviewed the English dubs of the first two, I think it would be great to see you do to do a, a crossover for the second subbed one, uh, since you guys reviewed many of the same movies. I've uh, as I've already stated before, but I cannot. Or sorry, I've already said this before, but I cannot wait to see your videos on them. Also, one of my friends is a voice actor and has many connections with other voice actors, so I'm going to try to make an English dub of the TV series and maybe the movies, if possible, since the Miramax ones suck. <laughs> but I am having difficulties getting the isolated instrumental tracks. Please let me know if you'd be interested in helping out with this project. <laughs> since you mentioned before that you are trying to find the English dub for the third movie, I thought I'd mention that I found it for free on the Amazon Prime Video service, if that helps. I've also shared with you a document listing the changes made in the English dubs for the, Hu for the Hugo films, and will include a printed version of this package, uh, though... 
Although then the links won't work. I intended to send you the movie War of the Birds, but unfortunately whoever uploaded it to YouTube only subtitled half of it. And I'm still new to Danish. Uh, and there isn't an English dub as far as I know, uh, though Wikipedia references a US release. Obviously nobody can review half a movie, but I'd still recommend checking out what is uploaded, as it is one of the most interesting movies I've ever come across. When I'm more fluent in Danish, though I'll definitely send the movie your way. My favorite reviews from you are Miracle in Toyland, <laughs> Help I'm a Fish, Alpha and Omega, Cars 2, and Maleficent. <laughs> and the first review... Maleficent was a good movie! Of course it was, sweetie. <laughs> oh, I'll remind you of that later. <laughs> oh, you don't have to remind me. It is there. It is never going away. No, patting me on the head. <laughs> That's going to come back and bite you in the butt. Now, I'm not going to smack your hand. You just wait. Read the letter. Nope, 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 mm -mm. nope. Nope. I love you. No, mm -mm. patting me on the head. I was kidding. Nope, too late now. I didn't know. You're in the doghouse. <laughs> I know who you are. Do you? I'm a very good mother. <laughs> okay, that was a little bit dumb, but there were a lot of good parts of that movie. Uh huh. There were. Can't wait to see what the second one's going to be about. <laughs> as you can tell, Bob Show is anxious to find out as well. There's nowhere to go! <laughs> <laughs> Back to the letter. And the first review I ever saw of yours was Roadside Romeo. <laughs> also, I'd like to ask a few questions here. What is the most squeaky movie you have ever reviewed? Probably Where the Dead Go to Die, for reasons I would rather not talk about. Yeah, I... that was that was like a whole that went way beyond squicky. That went into like criminal. Yes, that, <laughs> that that went into I feel like I should probably turn myself in for watching this. <laughs> okay, so give an answer on uh, not excluding that one, not counting that horrible abomination. <laughs> Maybe this is because the scar is still nice and fresh, but probably Puppy Star Christmas. <laughs> That's probably it. For me, it was um, uh, the, the, the moose brother and sister. <laughs> I can't remember the name of the movie, but uh, my goodness, the innuendo. <laughs> yeah. Hal and Holly, Holly and Hal moose, which... Woo. Where it, it really reads like those two and characters... And their secret love... Yes, it, it it seriously reads like these characters were supposed to be, um, if not boyfriend and girlfriend, that they were supposed to have some kind of interest in each other. But then somewhere along the way, the writers decided that they should be siblings and they forgot to take out that element of their relationship. <laughs> it's like, uh, something else going on here? <laughs> Christmas with extra squick. Oh, yes. <laughs> Uh, though it didn't win the vote, will you still get to Lady and the Tramp 2 and All Dogs Go to Heaven 2? Yes, I have teased about going into All Dogs Go to Heaven 2, haven't I? Uh, Lady and the Tramp 2? I should probably find a spot for that one, too, shouldn't I? <laughs> uh, will you be up uploading... Uh, will you be re-uploading a, re a review of Nico 2 or publishing it to any YouTube alternatives? Um, Is it not up? On uh, BitChute? I don't think so, but I've been meaning to put it up on BitChute. Okay. Um, I'll put it on the, the agenda. Thank you. <laughs> so yes, uh, be sure to keep an eye out for that. Uh, what is your favorite Rankin Bass film? <laughs> it's funny how I don't realize how emotionally invested I am in something until I see something else that's terrible and trying to rip it off. Uh, like uh, the aforementioned Maleficent. 
I didn't know that I was this into Maleficent's character as portrayed in Sleeping Beauty just to to finally see what a real betrayal that movie was to her. It's like, no, this is wrong. This should not be happening. <laughs> oh, hush. Angelina Jolie was Maleficent. She was born to play the role. Look at me agree with you. You're right. You're absolutely right. She there's was nothing wrong with a good redemption story. Not with the self-proclaimed queen of all evil. Everybody deserves a chance at redemption. Not when they're reveling in their evilness. But she found a better way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> only because the actual good guy decided to be an evil bastard from out of nowhere. <sighs> There were good things about that movie. There were. But then that ending, that final second and third act, it was just... Ugh. Now, I have to agree. They mishandled King Stefan, and I liked your treatment of it much better than what it actually happened. I wish they had done that. Thank you. That would have been very meaningful and very you, powerful. You, you want to update your fairy tales? It, 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 do something kind of ballsy and show good people doing bad things for good reasons. He did mutilate the woman he loved because he loved her. But nope. I'm just evil now. <laughs> back to the letter. Back to the letter. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry, uh, back to the question that was I uh, in the, the process of answering. Uh, my favorite name a Rankin Bass film would have to be Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Because I like a story about outsiders and people with uh, weird, quirky things about them that society is just kind of, ugh, really? <laughs> but he ended up saving the day in the end because of it, and he had every right to be a dick and say, no, screw you. You were mean to me, so I'm just gonna be mean to you right back and not save Christmas. But... Nope, he had to be the good guy and put his nose to good use. So, good for you, Rudolph. Good guy. <laughs> Forgive my ignorance, but is Santa when, when Santa Claus is coming to town? That's a Rankin Bass film, right? Yes, and that's my favorite one. Yeah, that one's pretty up there too. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Have you ever read Stella Luna? Mm, nope, can't say that I have. I have. Oh, yeah, what's that about? It's about a bat. It's about a bat. <laughs> Anything else about that? Do you have to read it to find out? I guess I will. <laughs> uh, thank you for taking your time to open my package. Unfortunately, I do not currently own any copies of these movies, but uh, here are some more I would like to see you a review. Uh, Stella Luna. Uh, Brother Bear 1 and 2. The Boy Who Cried Werewolf. Interesting. Yeah, I was about to say, that sounds intriguing. Uh, Balto 1, 2, and 3. And Bold Eagles. Since I don't have a credit card yet, and I really want to see the exclusive reviews, I included $12 to cover for a year of Patreon support. I'll send $12 yearly. My email is blaggedy blaggedy blue. Uh, assuming the exclusive content is accessed through uh, throughout links via email. Uh, actually, the exclusive content is uh, released through uh, Patreon, and they're set at... Uh, a specific tiers, so only uh, people paying this much can see this, this much can see that, etc. But hmm. we'll we'll work it out. Yeah, we'll... for you. But in the future, look into prepaid Visa cards. I think you can oh. get them for like twenty five dollars. Make sure it allows for online shopping type stuff. Um, and that may be be a way that you can pledge to Patreon and not have to have your own you know, bread and your credit card, because you can just go to the store and buy a prepaid Visa card. That might be one way of doing it. Or uh, don't they sell um, uh, uh, cards that are specifically for PayPal? How much you mentioned? I it? don't know, because PayPal is evil, and I don't have a <laughs> PayPal account, so I'm not sure how that works. Uh, I remember way back in the day I had a PayPal v MasterCard, mm -hmm. but uh, I don't know if they have just pay like PayPal gift cards. I don't know if they do that. Yeah, something to definitely look into here. Uh, 
Also included is the list of differences in the Hugo movies, as previously mentioned. And... <laughs> For some reason, this drawing uh, printed out really small, even though the preview had it taking up the whole page. If you want to see it, this drawing is in better quality and at full size. It has been posted on my DeviantArt page. Yes, it has. We have seen this image before, and it is great. <laughs> oh, I thought that was awesome. Mm -hmm. I just can't hold the weight of all these terrible movies anymore. Someone help! help and it looks like you're proposing to me with, with garbage. <laughs> Well, isn't that kind of what happened? <laughs> it kind of. Kind of, yeah. Uh, baby, do you want to maybe watch bad movies with me? I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> it was true love at first garbage movie. <laughs> and uh, Merry Late Christmas from the cast and crew of some of the things I've sent so far. <laughs> and included is... Rita and Hugo, of course. Um, some characters I don't yet recognize. Uh, we do have the lamp from the Brave Little Toaster up there. Recognize him all too well. And uh, Scrat from the Ice Age movies. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, very cute. Thank Is you very much. Is that Wolf Bob there in front? Um, maybe. He was wearing a big red bow instead of my red jacket. Looks kind of wolf bob -ish. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, then. Yes, but... you have to go to his art and see if there's any explanation. I guess I will, won't I? Right, let's see what else he's got here in this Mondo package for us. We have... Packing paper. Oh, goodness. <laughs> yes, indeed, we have... Ice Age, Continental Drift. That was Scrat there. Sorry for the tags and stickers. This was a product of a used uh, DVD, on this case Blu-ray, sale at my uh, library. <laughs> hey, thrift stores, uh, libraries, and stuff like that. Great places to get Bob Show material. Absolutely. We have robots, which I'm going to have to take a uh, deeper look at later. I remember seeing this years ago and thinking... Well, I guess that Don't happened. reveal what you saw. <laughs> yeah, don't 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 review it before you review it. Well, I'll have to review it in greater detail. <laughs> we have Rio. <laughs> and something that I'm going to have to uh, talk about because it's a bit more obscure. Littlest Pet Shop. Basically, all the same things I've said for Pound Puppies apply here. Only DVDs containing a few episodes of the first and second season exist. But I still thought these DVDs would serve as introductions slash first impressions for the shows. Little Pets Big Adventures. Join Blythe Baxter as she embarks on a brand new adventure. When she and her dad move into an apartment above the Littlest Pet Shop, she learns she can actually communicate with the pets who hang out in the shop's day camp. Can Blythe and her new friends keep the pet shop open for its eccentric owner, Mrs. Twombly? Find out with these exciting episodes of the popular new series, The Littlest Pet Shop. Episodes include Blythe's Big Adventure, Bad Hair Day, Gale Break, Penny for Your Laughs, and a look behind the pet shop doors, and coloring sheets. So, fun. <laughs> and oh my goodness. Just look at them staring into your soul. <laughs> The Littlest Pet Shops are very, still pretty popular. The toys. Are they? Yeah. Cool. We have the Tale of Despero, which I've actually been curious about. Haven't seen that yet. Once upon a time, in the faraway kingdom of Dor... It becomes Dormouse. <laughs> ...lived a brave and virtuous mouse with comically oversized ears who dreamt of becoming a knight. Banished from his home for having such lofty ambitions, Despero sets off on an amazing adventure with his good-hearted rat friend, Roscuro, who uh, who leads him, at long last, on a very noble quest to rescue an endangered princess and save an entire kingdom from darkness. Based on the heartwarming children's best-selling book and featuring the voice talents of an all-star cast, the, t the tale of Despero is a magical, modern fairy tale that is destined to win the hearts of young and old alike. <laughs> 
think I'll enjoy that one. And we have Pan Puppies. This DVD only comes with a few episodes. I was a fan of the Pound Puppy cartoon. <laughs> I remember watching the cartoon, except I don't remember anything from it. Only the that I saw some of it. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> Wash. <laughs> it's because you were so young. You were just a baby. Anyway. <laughs> this DVD only comes uh, with a few episodes and serves as more of an introduction to the show. Although it comes with the final episode. I'd like to uh, see a review of this series. Most of the other episodes can be found online since it wasn't fully released on DVD. That's a shame. Join seven er, bleh, join Lucky and his pals for seven pup-tastic adventures. Lucky, Niblet, Cookie, Squirt, and Strudel return with uh, new friends and more uh, crazy adventures. Lucky gets adopted against his will by Dot, a hyperactive young girl. A chatty parrot learns the puppy's deepest secrets, and puppies are being returned to Shelter 17? What, Shelters 1 through 16 are okay? <laughs> find out what happens as this team of determined canines do whatever it takes uh, to find a perfect, or to find the perfect loved ones uh, for each and every pet at Shelter 17. <laughs> you also got... Without Cases... Uh, Rio 2 and Fox and the Hound 2. Big fan of the original Fox and the Hound, but haven't seen the, the sequel yet. So let's see what that's all about. As well as more characters that I did not recognize from the artwork, but I recognize now. Valiant. And I can't read the blurb on the back because it is covered in stickers from the library. Thanks, library. <laughs> Oops. We also have, ooh, I'm going to have to dig into you someday. <laughs> uh, loaded with funky, cool animation and off-the-wall comedy. Oh, that's cute. It thinks it's funny. <laughs> when Chuck the Astronaut, Dwayne Johnson, lands on a distant planet filled with little green people, he... I'm down. Hmm? I'm down. Let's watch it. Oh, sure. You say that now. It's got the rock in it, baby. Just you wait. Oh, I can wait. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait a minute. <laughs> uh, he is surprised to discover that we are not alone in, in the galaxy. But he gets the shock of his life when the residents of Planet 51 mistakenly believe that his presence is the start of an alien invasion of the humankind. Luckily, an alien teenager named Lem, Justin Long, bleh, uh, quickly realizes that Chuck is friendly, and the two blast off on, on an adventure to try and return Chuck safely to his spaceship. <laughs> yes, this definitely deserves a review for reasons I cannot get into now because gotta save it. <laughs> we also have the Velveteen Rabbit. Oh, Toby must spend an uncomp an unpromising uh, Christmas with his unapproachable grandmother. As Toby explores an attic, he discovers a gift left by his angel mother. His love for the stuffed toy rabbit opens up his world of imagination. <laughs> Which looks like a uh, Mary Poppins-esque uh, combination of live action and animation. So, definitely gonna have to give this a look-see. And what may be the biggest slap in my childhood's face since Michael Bay directed the Transformers movies... The Brave Little Toaster Goes to Mars. Just... <laughs> you have to tell the story of your dad and the Brave Little Toaster. At least before you review the movie, you have to tell <laughs> how important the Brave Little Toaster is to you. Yes. Uh, now we're, we're going to finally crack into to, to this movie. Maybe a little bit of it now, and, and and the full story when you crack into it. Yeah, so, when I was just a wee lad, our home had been busted in, into, and our VCR was stolen. Uh, I remember, uh, this was back at the time when VCRs were brand spanking new technology. And, because I loved this movie so much, uh, it, our copy of The Brave Little Toaster was in there when it was stolen. 
my dad apparently went through heaven and hell to get that VCR back. Just to get that copy of the movie back for me. <laughs> so, thank you. Bro. That wasn't even the... I had never heard that. That wasn't even the story I was talking about. Okay, now I'm confused. What, st what story were you thinking about? Well, you'll have to wait till you review it. I guess. <laughs> well, I'll tell you later, and they have to wait until you review it. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, keep a lookout for this movie, because apparently there are stories untold, even by me, in it. <laughs> you don't... Well, oh, okay, just as a hint, it's a similar situation to your mom and Pinocchio. Your dad? Brave little toaster? Mm, we'll discuss it later. Sorry, it's not... Oh, my goodness, me. okay. I know, I suck. Leave me alone. And there is one final little thing in this package here. And it's from Folk Menace. It's a Yorkie. Oh my god, that's amazing! Just... <laughs> it's tiny! <laughs> Just really? Thank you! <laughs> It is tiny, I can't right. wait till you use her to review something. You have to, you know. I, I do have to. If I can fit my giant man hand in her uh, tiny, tiny little head. I don't know if this is working. <coughs> I'm so cramped up in my own body. Someone help, I can't move. <laughs> Do they stretch at all? No. No. Yeah, I love you, Folk Manus, but let's make some puppets for the adult users, please. <laughs> Dog of the Mine. Back in the days when tons of coal were dug from Yorkshire's earth every week and sent to London, a man from the north arrived in Turret uh, looking for work in the mines. He owned a little terrier that went with him everywhere. Though the boss would not allow him to bring Colleen for that was her name, meaning girl in his Gaelic tongue, into the pit at first. Soon owners and miners alike uh, grew very fond of her sweet uh, nature and funny, bold ways. Let her come down with him, then. Her name sounds like coal anyway, said uh, one of the colliers, uh, which is what miners are called in England. Down below, Colleen, uh, provided <laughs> Colleen proved herself a good rat catcher, and brought a bright spot into the grueling workday, too. And then one day, a shaft collapsed, trapping four men. No one knew uh, where they were until the terrier began digging in a certain spot. The miners were saved, and Colleen was a hero. So great was the gratitude of the colliers that they petted the little dog again and again with their coal-blackened hands. Somehow, because they had touched her with such love, the fur on her back, under her coat of long white hairs, remained black from then on. And that is why this Yorkshire Terrier's son and daughters took a, a look that way, too. So, no, this is not tiny. It is Colleen. It's <laughs> very cute. So, got a little backstory to her. <laughs> very cute. No, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is just ridiculous. <laughs> and yes, I definitely am going to have to find a a very particular review to uh, feature her in now. So thank you very much. And uh, anyone else who has uh, fan art, letters, packages they want to send me, go ahead and ship it to the PO box in the corner there, and I'll see you guys later. Oh.